Welcome to our weekly meditation on uh, what we've all realized is already into June. I'm going to be using some of Sarah Bessie's notes from the wilderness, but there's a little bit of a diversion perhaps, um, but picking up on one of her themes. She starts off this particular chapter talking about saying, do not be anxious about anything is something we often hear. Um, sometimes it might be construed as that if we are anxious or afraid, that's some sort of failing. But as she points out, fear is actually useful. It's a response to perceived threats, trying to keep us safe. So perhaps rather than chiding ourselves for being fearful, it might be more helpful to ask, what is it I'm afraid of? And she recognizes that in her tradition in the United States, some, maybe many people are actually afraid of God because of what they've been taught and grown up with. She says though that she's convinced that evolving in our faith, challenging, letting go, doesn't mean we need be afraid of God. Why would we need, why need we not be afraid of God? Because God is love. And the invitation to the wilderness is an invitation to love. So with that reassurance, we bring our attention to this moment, to this place. And we go through our own particular ritual, our practice of settling ourselves, of feeling the contact with the floor, with the chair or the sofa, adjusting our hands, but noticing each movement, noticing our posture as we get comfortable but are focused and alert. Our eyes, whether we close them or focus on the image. And then as we direct our attention to our breath. Just the normal breathing first and noticing what we just take for granted all the time. The natural rise and fall of the abdomen and chest. Conscious of the air coming in through the nostrils and out through the mouth. And now we consciously and intentionally take two deeper breaths, filling the lungs and then exhaling through the mouth and again Imagining that we're drawing in energy from the air around us, from the atmosphere, maybe even from the universe. Filling not just the lungs, but the body with energy, positive energy. And then as we breathe out, releasing any stress, releasing worries, releasing negative thoughts, maybe visualizing them passing out on that exhalation, not holding on to them, but breathing them out. Because at this moment, all there is, is the breath. Breathing in a positive energy. And breathing out anything negative. 
Maybe it's trying to cling on inside the mind. Just let it go out with the breath. Leaving a clean space within. Or maybe visualize the breath as a gentle wave. Washing in and then washing out, carrying any unwanted thoughts or emotions. So continue to breathe deeply. Maybe adding, holding the breath after the inhalation. Following the movement of the air or the movement of the wave. Filling, enriching, washing out, emptying. And allowing yourself just to focus on this moment. Nothing to think about of the future. Nothing to reminisce about from the past. Just the breath, the imagery, filling with energy and the letting go. Sarah Bessie again says that the love of God is not a far off destination we're striving to arrive at or a prize we must earn. We are all loved now. Although in the wilderness love might look different to what we've known before. It might be tougher, stronger, maybe plainer, healthier kitchen table rather than a pew. It might look like protesting and organising. It might even look like confrontation and conflict. She says, let your imagination about love be set free. Imagine even loving yourself well. Because there are so many ways to love one another once we remember that we are loved already. And though that thought echoes exactly words of Bishop Desmond Tutu, who says, before you can love your neighbour as yourself, you must first love yourself. And to first love yourself, you must know that God loves you now and loves you always. So it seems to me there's a bit of a, a pattern, there's a flow here. Firstly, we are loved by God. And then knowing this, we are able to love ourselves. And then if we come to the first two commandments that Jesus reminded us of loving God and loving others. And here I switch to Richard Raw, who says, the only way I know how to teach anyone to love God and how I try to love God is to love what God loves, which is everything and everyone. 
We love because God first loved us. Then we love with God's infinite love that can always flow through us. So that idea of a flow, God loving us, us loving ourselves, us able then to love others. And that takes surrender and letting go as we get ourselves out of the way, a slow but real expansion of consciousness till finally, just as Jesus did, we can love and forgive even our enemies. So to reiterate, when we accept the unconditional love that God offers us, then we can allow God to love others through us in the same way. Hence the image on the screen of a, a flow, perhaps we're the pond, the love of God flowing into the pond, filling us, and then the stream leaving us loving others. So before our, our silence, a little exercise based on a teaching from Friar Francisco de Asuna, whose writings deeply inspired Teresa of Avila. So this is back to the 16th century wisdom. And Richard Raw has put this into his own words, but this is what Francisco taught his students. Firstly, dam up the fountain of your soul where love is always springing forth. Secondly, then it will be forced to rise. yet it will remain quiet and at rest within you. Wait for that quiet. You will see the image of God reflected in your own clear waters, more resplendent than in any other thing, provided the disturbing turmoil of thoughts dies down. Try to stay beneath your thoughts, neither fighting them nor thinking them. Hold yourself at a deeper level than your mind, perhaps in your chest, stomach or breath. Resist any desire to repress or express, just allow animal contentment. It will feel like nothing or darkness. Stay crouched there at the cellular level without shame, long enough for another source to begin to flow and well up as light or joy. From this place the love flows through you from the source as an energy more than as an idea. God in you and through you recognises and loves God in yourself and in others too. And so as we move to our longer silence, we might imagine that idea of a flow, us as a conduit, been filled with God's love and then dispersing it to love others. You might recall the vine and branches imagery, the non-duality between God and us. You might take some of those words of 
Francisco de Osuna. Dam up the fountain of your soul, where love is always springing forth, and allow it to rise. Wait for another source to begin to flow and well up as light or joy. Or simply focus on your breath as a way of staying present. Or walk down that imaginary staircase to your inner room, to your heart centre. We'll go there with music from Salt of the Sound. Known.
And so we gently emerge from our silence. Knowing that we are all loved now. You might return to the breath and just take a deep, relaxing breath in and out. You might wiggle your toes. Stretch your fingers. Gently open your eyes if they've been closed. Just close with well-known words from Letter of John. Since God so loves us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Amen.